that you offer up for lives. Present. Be you You Welcome. Present. 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 Present in the chambers. Online we have the heart. Go ahead and see if we can pop them in. Their number's not showing up, so apparently they haven't called in. They have not called in. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Evans. Yes. Mr. Well, I'm calling the roll. Would you state your, would you state your name and that you are present on the phone? Yes, sir. Ralph Webb, present. Thank you. Did you hear me? Ms. Powell, please state your name and that you are on the phone. Evelyn Powell, present. Thank you. Ms. Harris is not calling in. So we'll, we'll check her in when she comes in. Mr. Evans, would you take your instructions, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson, read our safety instructions. Good evening, everyone. I want to give the following instructions in case of an emergency. First, please take a moment to note where you're if an emergency arises that prompts us to evacuate, I ask that everyone exit this room in a quick and orderly manner through one of the two doors to your right. Then proceed to the nearest stairwell, directions to which are indicated by exit sign. Once you exit the building, we ask that you safely cross the street to either of our parking lots to be safely away from the building. Our staff will provide help, direction, and assistance. Tornado warning, we ask that you exit this room into the hallway where we will remain until it is safe to enter. In the event of an active shooter in the building, we will run if there is an accessible escape path, try to evacuate the premises, hide if you cannot evacuate, find a place to hide where you are less likely to be found, lock any doors that you can, fight as a last resort and only if your life is in intimate danger, our staff will provide assistance on what to do, thank you for your attention. Brother Hines, would you please offer prayer? God, we thank you for today. We are blessed with living experiences that has carried us through this corona, the coronavirus, and we ask your protection, we ask your guidance. As we share this meeting, many things we do in faith and be able to make our county better place and to be a Christ our Lord. Amen. You have received the minutes and your package is all. Additional corrections, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, all in favor, let it be known by the vote and sign I and state I. Please state your name. <coughs> I, Evelyn Powell. I, Ralph Webb. And I, Donald Marshall. I, Leonard Williams. Uh, all opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. At this time, we will, we will convene the regular, we will recess the regular board of commissions meeting and convene a board of equalization and review. Is there a motion? Second. Motion and second by President Hines. Second. All in favor, let it be known by the vote and sign aye. Please state your name and how you vote. Ms. Powell? Aye, Evelyn Powell. Webb? Aye, Ralph Webb. Mr. Wooten? Aye, Billy Wooten. Mr. Bosman? Aye, Donald Bosman. Robert Hines? Aye, yeah. Leonard Wiggins? Close to two. For that. And Ms. Harris is on there. Ms. Harris, please state your name and that you are present. Woo. Ms. Harris, do you hear me? I hear you. Do you not hear me? I hear you now. Please state your name and that you are present. Paula Harris, present. Okay, thank you. We have now convened Ms. Harris and at, at the Board of Equalization and Review. Mr. Peters? 
Yes, sir. <clears throat> First, the committee is to uh, administer the oath to the four commissioners who are present here today. Uh, Ms. Powell and Ms. Harris will administer the oath earlier today, and Mr. Webb and Ms. Powell will be a later date when they're physically present. Can I expect them to be physically present at our school board meetings? Sir, the other two that I'm expected to come to the school board meeting, yes, so we can do that then. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, okay. the commissioners here today, uh, there should be a Bible at your seat. You should have a copy of the oath from uh, the professional administrator. Can you please <clears throat> place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right? Do you solemnly affirm that you will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States and the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of your office as a member of the Board of Equalization and Review of Eskimo County, North Carolina? that you will not allow your actions as a member of the Board of Equalization Energy to be influenced by personal or political friendship or obligation. That will be I If you'll each, if your name's not written in, if you'll print your name and then sign or it says signature or print your name. And while you're doing that, I'm going to ask Ms. Theresa Lewis, our tax administrator, and she will give us some instruction on what the, uh, the process or the next steps will be. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so what we're going to do now is we have been spent a uh, notice of decision letter that needs action for both a regular appeal for the Board of Equal Based and Review and a discovery bill. So, um, you should have a copy of each of those in your packet, and we will need to take um, action and accept that medical decision as two separate actions. That's two separate actions? Yes, sir. Those of you that are um, on the line, do you have the copies of those? Yes. It's a notice of decision and a notice Yes. Of, okay. Is there a motion to approve the notice of decision? So moved. Thank you, All in favor, let it be known by the vote sign. Aye. Um, Ms. Aye. Powell, please state your name and how you vote. Evelyn Powell. Aye. Mr. Webb, please state your name and how you vote. Ralph Webb. Aye. Harris, please state your name and how you vote. Paula Harris. Aye. Good. Really wouldn't, uh, I don't know that you want to in. I, I was going to say, I don't think right, I, would, I would agree. I would agree. Okay, but I got it. Don't fall, uh, 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 uh,
No, sir. Just to close the meeting until the next day. Is there anything that's on the board of your meeting with the Board of Equalization Review until uh, the May 20th budget work session will be May 20th at 10 8. Motion to move, Billy. Second, Donald Foster. Any questions? Any questions? Motion to move, Billy. Second, Donald Foster. 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 Motion to move, Billy. Second, Thank you. At this time, we have some public petitions. You said we do have some that came in? Yes, sir. And just to remind everyone, because of our current situation where the meeting is not open to the public, we did publish in our notice that folks would have the opportunity to submit public comments uh, either in writing, submitted mail to our office, or by email to a public comment email account that we have set up. We did receive one email uh, prior to the deadline, which was uh, yesterday at 5 o'clock. The comment, public comment in the form of four questions comes from uh, Mr. Camilla Stanton. Mm -hmm. uh, he has four questions, and if it's okay with you, Mr. Wiggins, as I read each of his questions, I'll respond to each of those questions, if that's okay. So the first question is, is it true that the health department is no longer doing COVID-19 testing and that they are being done at the hospital. Um, well, the response to that is that our health department has not been doing, we have never done COVID-19 testing. Uh, we have only a very limited supply of uh, test kits. They are reserved um, for uh, if there happens to be uh, cases at one of our uh, uh, long-term long -term care facilities or nursing facilities. And so all of the cases that are being done in Edgecombe County or for Edgecombe County residents have been from the beginning done by private providers. We have not done any testing. Uh, that was just the response to that first question. Second question is, why have the Edgecombe County Health Department stopped updating their website as it relates to the latest up on the coronavirus? The health department is no longer doing the testing and they have a problem with the latest update date. They need to remove the old information off their page. Um, and it's not that we or the health department have stopped doing updates. Um, the updates on our website, we post that information uh, pretty much daily, both on our Facebook page and our website. It's much easier, much quicker to get that on our Facebook page. I mean, we can do that from our cell phone walking you know, across the parking lot. Um, but it's a little bit more involved to do that update on the website. So sometimes there's a little bit of a lag on our website, but we do try to keep that updated as regularly as possible. And we do have that at two places on our website. We have it both on the health department page of our website, and we also have it on a newly created COVID-19 page that the county has. So sometimes there has been a little bit of a lag in updating that number, particularly over the weekend. Um, but for the quickest update, um, folks can find that on Facebook. Third question is, why is the COVID-19 information on the county, <clears throat> excuse me, county website and the health department website not included that per zip code, and why don't you start including it? I found the information on NCDHHS website on Saturday, and it was kind of difficult to find. This information should be included where the county information is reported, along with the other information that is already being shared. And as we've had some discussion before, we've spent some time somewhat laboring over what we felt like we could, uh, what information we could share and what we could not share. Um, the county is under two laws, actually, that dictates the kind of information that we have to keep private, and that's both federal law, HIPAA, as most folks know it, as well as a state um, law regarding uh, communicable disease. Um, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services actually is not under the umbrella of the federal HIPAA law. So they can, they have a little bit more flexibility in what they can share. However, that information is per zip code available on the state North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services website. And one thing we have not done, we can do, is that we can put a link on our website to direct 
to the state website. Oh, because you're satisfied that we have to And number four, I hope Edgecombe County will take in consideration the COVID-19 status of what is going on in Edgecombe County when it comes to the reopen. Please do not rush to reopen if the status of the county shows you should not do so. Um, and I totally understand that as a concern. Uh, just as in particular for any of the public who may be listening in on the call, the only action that the county has taken, or not the only, but the action that the county has taken is uh, uh, Commissioner Wiggins signed a state of emergency a little over two months ago now. And there are a number of, of provisions that are offered to counties when a state of emergency is enacted. The only thing at this point that we are using that state of emergency to do is... Um, is uh, we have closed all of the county buildings with a very few exceptions um, to the public so that we can protect both the public as well as uh, our staff. Um, I believe the reopening or, or the stay-at-home order that he may be referring to is um, under the governor's executive order as that covers the entire state. So if uh, stores and restaurants and those kinds of things were to reopen, it would be um, at the direction of uh, of the governor. But again, I, I certainly do agree that any of those decisions should be made with um, with great caution. And, and those are the four questions, and that's the only public comment that we received. Any comments from the commissioners on the phone or any in the chamber? things I want to point out. Um, if you look at the top right corner, you'll see they are number, number two uh, in the packet. I, I do want to point out, uh, you will see it says to appropriate funds for additional preparations for fiscal year FY20, uh, and this is for um, our funding to the Edgecombe County Rescue Squad. You will remember that back at your retreat, uh, they made a, requ a request for $600,000 because of additional expenses and budget shortfall. Um, you approved at that time an additional appropriation of $300,000. I met with, uh, uh, met with them and see that there's additional funding uh, that is needed. And so my recommendation would be to allocate an additional $300,000 to the rescue squad. So you, that you have that um, by way of a budget amendment. Uh, the second one that I will point to well, uh, Mr. Webb, you with us? Yes, sir. Okay, go right here. Uh, the second that I will point out will be uh, number five in your packet. Uh, just want to point out that um, this budget amendment is to appropriate funding um, that was received through the health department for the COVID-19 crisis funding. Uh, there were some funds early on that came from the state to help with uh, help local health departments in responding. Uh, to the pandemic, and so you'll see uh, almost $75,000 received, and it is being used to supplement some costs and salaries and some other things. Um, and I'll give you, I'll talk a little bit more about other funding that's perhaps on the way later in, in my update. Um, I'm happy to answer questions on any of the other ones. Those are the two that I wanted to point out. Yeah, must you approve? I just got a question. Go ahead. I just I just want to know if the only question is over where the school has increased every column, but not just curious if they're already moving up. Which, 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 for the Board of Elections, just the school, just from all information, I saw where everything 
Right, and it and it was because of you know whenever there's an election, the local board of elections has to make decisions about um, how many uh, voting sites will be open, how many hours will be for each one. Uh, you know that's made within some limits that are set by the state, and because of the the date or the locations and the times that the board of elections chose to have, um, it increased the cost for that. So as you'll see, he he's. Um, uh, funds to uh, to be able to cover those calls. Right. I have a question. Number two, associated with the uh, registry squad. So, at our retreat, we authorized three hundred more thousand dollars. That took our budget to one point five. So yeah. it was originally it's one point two. Yes. Yeah. And now we're the second three hundred thousand. That's six hundred thousand dollars. That's going to that's going to take care of what they need for the same year. Yeah. And, and, and so it will take you. You saying yes, based on what they have shared with me. Uh, thank you. Yes, yeah, before. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I should qualify. That. It, 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 well, they told us at the meeting they felt like they needed six hundred to get to the end of the year without having any payables roll over to the next system. And so the decision at the time was to you know let's give them enough to get them through the next couple of payrolls. Let's have a chance to sit down and think about this, talk about this for a little bit. Based on what they have reported to me, this will get them caught up on receivable or, or, or payables that they have um, that have been lingering, and hopefully it will clear all of those out so that they will start the next fiscal year um, off with no carry forward balance. That's what they have reported. And I, and I do recall our, our conversation that Mr. Powell and Mr. Walton and the others that I had, and they were talking about 600000 in and based on some of the conversation I've had with um, Mr. Evans in terms of what we're proposing and how they might change, okay, I've got somewhat satisfied in terms of uh, the way they plan to restructure some things, but I think we give the board, our board, you know, a little more control of that's what, based on my conversation with the Evans, and maybe he will discuss that some of that some of later, but I'm, I was satisfied with my discussion. In, in our retreat, we talked about there was large sums that had to do any owed. Has any of that come, um, started to come in? Uh, from oh, past, from Medicaid cost Medicaid, $450,000. No, no, we're closer, yet. but it has not. And, and just to speak to what Mr. Wiggins mentioned, so one of the concerns that we've had had to do with their board governance. It was heavily weighted toward um, people who have a direct uh, connection to the rescue squad, some of them which work for the rescue squad. We asked them to consider going back and um, sizing their board makeup, and, and they had no disagreement with that. The, there is the board, volunteer board at a point. Um, they have a committee that's been reviewing their um, constitution, including board appointment, and uh, they're going through the process of that. Right now, um, Is it would uh, give five appointments from the county and then three from the volunteer board. And that's not the final, what has been voted on, but that's where the draft stands. And, and, and if, in fact, it comes to us that way, I can be more satisfied. Because that point that will be ours, and I think it will. It, it's, it's really a, a, a it's really our rescue squad now. <laughs> it's related to the funding of it. Which should we, uh, if we would receive any of those past due money between now and end of this year, we need to pull back, fall back. We could, absolutely, but there's all but the money way. comes to us anyway, though. It does come to us, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm saying once we authorize another 300000 into the rescue squad, and then you're saying, oh, are we obligated by law to make sure that money we receive possibly has to go straight to the rescue squad or put it the general fund? There's no obligation. No, it's, it's supposed to support the county and our call to provide a rescue squad. Yeah, now, now, it appears to me we just have thanks that one. Now, it does. I agree. <laughs> hey, anybody on the phone? That's what I thought, too. We would just advance it. <laughs> Would you say that's okay? Well, but to some degree, we also need to keep in mind that their capital purchase that we have been putting off, 
you know, namely rescue squads, the trucks themselves. They've got trucks that have got lots of miles, over 200,000 miles on them, and we've been kind of kicking that can down the road. So once that money comes in, we do need to use some of that to replace, uh, start down a path of replacing those trucks. Well, well, I think that's been our problem is that, that, that we've had no control over none of this. Okay. And if we get, if the board changes, at least we will have the, the appointment of board members in terms of so I think we have much to say to us the house right. How do you feel about that? Well, I, mean, I think we, we all knew that this was coming and this has been ongoing for years. So we're hoping to start at ground zero for the next fiscal year is what it boils down to. And it took us six hundred thousand dollars to get there. We're going to control the Medicaid fund in the future that we hope to use for capital outlay like the rest of squad trucks and what they can put. Just to have to fund a little higher than what we've been funded to provide the same sort of we can provide that we need. Well, I think we can fund a little higher if we just know how to fund it. Then. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead, Ms. Harris. Do we have a timetable for them to make that decision about the board changes, or are we just going to wait until they decide? Well, I was going to say we've asked them to have that done by the first of the fiscal year. Um, okay. Their committee has worked on, I think, their meeting again soon to review a final draft. Then they have to put it out for 30 days for the full board to, uh, to review it um, before they take a vote. Okay. But they have it in place by the beginning of the fiscal year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from anybody? We didn't get a motion, did we? I got one more question. Just yeah. for my information, you can call the courthouse expenditure for electricity. Which budget amendment? Uh, number six. It just says electricity, electricity, natural gas, making public security. Yeah, so we're actually, uh, three of those lines, electricity courthouse, admin, and natural gas administration building, um, in this budget amendment, he is decreasing those right. lines. I didn't think about it. What I wanted to know, what was it for to start with? Is it where we've been remodeling things like that? No, it's, it's, it's just for the, the, okay. the, light, the light bill for okay. the courthouse and the admin building and um, the natural gas and have not used, he's not needed as much as okay. that. Very good. Yes. I know we spent a lot of money on that. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, but this, this is in our normal operation. Okay. But you. Yeah, good question. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Billy Williams, second. All in favor, let me know about the vote to aye. 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 Ms. Harris? Paula Harris, aye. Thank you. Moving on to a consideration of approval agreement with the Dominic Consortium. Go ahead. I just said, Mr. Wiggins, this is uh, the joint cooperative agreement for participation in the Downey Stone Consortium or DH period running from July of this year through June of 2023. As you'll recall, Edgecombe County is able to receive federal home funds by being a part of the DEHC. Home funds provide for housing and community development activities for low-income families. Typically, these funds we receive are used for housing rehabilitation projects. We, we participate along with the City of Rock Mount, who serves as the lead entity, and several other municipalities in the Twin Counties region. Allocations vary from year to year depending on federal allocations, <coughs> but typically around $100,000 per year available for projects in our county. I recommend that you approve the agreement as presented. Motion to approve. Chair moves. Second. Question. All in favor, let it be known by the voting sign. Aye. Roll aye. 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 Ms. Powell? Powell, aye. Powell or Harris, aye. Ms. Harris, we are by. Thank you. Moving on to consideration of local water supply plan. Now, we are required to submit an annual water supply plan to the North Carolina Division of Water Resources. This plan provides a general description of the system, the supply sources, and how it is operated. 
Until recently, it was not required that these plans be approved by the Board of Commissioners. However, we recently received correspondence that the Board does need to retroactively adopt the 2018 and 2019 plans. Being that District 6, or Princeville, is not currently interconnected to the rest of the water system, there are separate plans for it included. I recommend that you approve the enclosed resolution as presented. Is this, is this one motion to keep? You can do it one motion. Is there a motion to approve? Paula Harris, I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in Questions? All in favor, let it be known. Uh, Golden sign, I, Reverend Hines. I, Reverend Hines. Senator Wiggins, I. All in favor, let it be known. Wiggins, I. Ms. Harris. Uh, Viola Harris, aye. Paula, aye. I'm sorry. Ralph Will, aye. Did we get all that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and just to let you know that the 2020 plan has been submitted to the state and currently under review. Once they review it, they will send it back and we'll bring that to you for your. You have in your. Uh, package also agreement with North Carolina Business and Vocational Rehab Service. That's an annual yes. uh, agreement that we do. It's based on your review of it in your package. Is there a motion to approve? The chair makes a motion. Get a second. Second. All about it. Any questions? All in favor? I'll let that be no matter what's going on. I rub an iron. Then a wicked side. Donald Boswell, I. Wouldn't not. Ms. Harris. Paula Harris, I. Paul. Paul. I. Mm -hmm. Ralph Webb, I. Thank you. Consideration of approval of JPC funding plan for fiscal year. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ms. Harris. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We. Um, as you know, we, we get funding to do this every year, and this is uh, for programs to serve uh, court-involved or at-risk youth. Uh, this year, the funding amount actually increased some because of the raise to age expansion. Uh, we've been receiving the same amount for, I don't know, as long as I've been on that, that committee, which is, I don't know, it's been a long time. And so... Um, it now is uh, $255,122. The JCPC board has met and recommends six programs that are listed there in your agenda packet. And it does include or require a local match, which will be $25,512, which will be uh, included in our budget for FY21. So recommendations will approve. Question. Yeah. Can you tell me what the increase was? You said it increases you. Mm -hmm. It um, it usually uh, it is usually two hundred and thirty thousand dollars, I believe it is, and it went up just a little bit. Got a question? Go ahead. Uh, Ariel, what is hometown hires that the peacemakers have? Uh, it is a uh, job training uh, on the job training type of program that the peacemakers. Uh, has been running now for a couple of years. Is that anywhere in East Cone County? Because I've never heard of it. Uh, they it, they are located in Rocky Mount, so they serve uh, they serve you for both Edgecombe and Nash County. Uh, they can only they can only get our funding when they serve an Edgecombe County resident. They also get funding from Nash County as well. Uh, and and by the way, a number of these programs are funded by by multiple counties. A lot of them get funding from both us and Nash County, sometimes other counties like Wilson County. But they have to use that money to serve uh, youth in that particular county. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you can get me any numbers of how many Edgecombe County citizens they're serving on both of those, Freedom School and Hometown Hires? Or I can get you what they served uh, in the last program of the year. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. You're well. And, you know, I think maybe my comments should be more so first on this list, but I consider base programs. Okay. So I think we need to, to look at uh, to the JPCP board in terms of how this is done and expected about the people and how it is advertised or how we get people involved because I don't see it 
I and also went through. Um, we need to go. We need to go back to the, the bullet. I call. Yeah. Uh huh. Resolution of Appreciation for the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. 
Whereas on October 16, 2016, Hurricane Matthew hovered over Edgecombe County in the coast of eastern North Carolina, brought about devastating flooding. And whereas hundreds of structures were damaged and thousands of individuals were displaced, many with little to no resources to build back their lives. And as the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church came to Edgecombe County with a commitment to help families recover. In that effort, they set up the Tarver Mission Center through which they host volunteers from all over the world, facilitated thousands of hours of labor, of labor, and served 153 families by rebuilding their home. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Edgecombe County Board of <coughs> publicly recognizes the efforts of the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church, especially the staff of the Tarboro Mission Center, and hereby extend our heartfelt gratitude for helping our citizens to feel back better this fourth day of May in the year of our Lord, 2020. And, did I get a motion? Would you like a motion? I made the motion that we consider the adoption of this resolution of appreciation. Thank you, Donald. I'll second. And we just, we just like to, again, on behalf of the board of the North Carolina Council of the United Methodist Church and the suggestion of all who's our local uh, administrator here, and uh, they have done just so much uh, for the lives of our citizens and, and rebuilding. And then how many homes are? Hundreds and 153 families. 153 families, and that's tremendous. And uh, um, this is just a small way of this kind of thing. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of adopting the resolution, let it be known by both sides. Aye, Reverend Hyde. Aye, Reverend Hyde. Mr. Wooten, aye. Boswell, I. Um, Powell, I. Powell, I. Harris, I. Ralph, Webb, I. And they mean. And at Wiggins, I. <laughs> it is approved. Next on our agenda is approved. The series approval of residents to authorize the sale of surplus seven service handguns to the sheriff's office. Go ahead. Uh, the sheriff's office has received a donation to purchase new weapons for his deputy. Sheriff Atkinson is requesting your approval to allow deputies to purchase their current handguns. North Carolina General Statute does allow the governing body to dispose of personal property owned by the county uh, through a negotiated sale. I recommend that the board approve the attached resolution, which will allow Sheriff Atkinson to offer these weapons for sale to his deputies. I do want to point out um, in the resolution that's in your agenda packet, there's the uh, two slight corrections that is on the copy that we'll ask you to sign, Mr. Wiggins, where it says in the first two parts there that he determined that many of the service weapons issued actually was all of the service weapons issued. So he replaced all of the weapons for his okay. deputies through this donation. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise for that uh, second part there. Mm -hmm. And is there a motion to approve it as directed by the deputy? So we second. Uh, interject here a question. Uh, Mr. Evans, I spoke to you about possibly taking about possibly what? And uh don't have uh, donated the money to help buy the guns. There was a sales tax charged for those guns mm -hmm. and uh, it was brought to our attention that maybe those sales tax dollars that were generated to our county can also be given to the sheriff. That's the $1,500. Picking up. I'm having the same problem. Yeah, once we know what that amount is, we can uh, we can do that by way of the budget. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh, all in favor, let it be known by the board and sign. Aye. Let's see. Wooten, aye. Boswell, aye. Wiggins, aye. I mean, aye. Uh, uh, Mr. Will. Ralph Will, aye. Yes, Evan sir. Powell, aye. Paula Harris, aye. Oh, my God. H. Personal school uh, amendment to the personnel plan. In light of the current COVID-19 pandemic, I've realized that in order for us to be able to continue to provide our essential services, our employees must report to work and face the risks of doing so. In an effort to minimize those risks, we have closed most of our buildings to the public 
and we have a majority of our employees working on a rotating uh, on rotating schedule. However, there are many of our functions where a rotating schedule is not possible. For these employees, I would like to be able to compensate them in some way. Our personnel policy does not currently have a provision for hazard compensation. Therefore, I am requesting that you consider approving the attached policy addendum. As you will see, it gives me three options for compensation with limits. <coughs> Two of these options involve additional pay, while the third is compensatory leave. I recommend that the board approve the hazard compensation policy. And if I could, Mr. Chairman, just add to that, um, if the board chooses to uh, adopt this tonight and amend our personnel policy, uh, my decision on which of these three options to use will be dependent on whether or not we feel uh, reasonably assured that we can get this reimbursed through some of the funding that's coming from the federal government down through the state. Um, based on just a pre preliminary estimate, it would be a considerable amount of money if we did either options one or two. That is the flat amount that's given no more than two pay periods or a percentage of uh, uh, the employee um, salary over a two-month period. So it, it would be upwards of somewhere between $125,000, um, so As I mentioned earlier, I think the governor did sign into law today the state's budget on how to use $1.5 billion coming from the federal government. Uh, we just started to get some guidance on how uh, that money will make its way down. Some of it will make its way down to county and how, in turn, we might be able to use it. So uh, I would like to have this as an option, um, particularly for this, but it could be something that would be necessary uh, in the future with other actions. Question. I would like this thing. Um, I've had some conversation with everyone on this thing, and I do support it because it's if you don't have a policy, you don't have a personnel policy that will allow it, you can't get it. <laughs> so we need to be in a position to, and it is a discretion call. And I would move. Go ahead. Uh, we're not certain of what that is. So that is discretion call. Right. Uh, from what I understand, that a part of that $1.5 billion, part of that is going to come directly to local government. From what I understand, is that is going to be based on population. So every county is not going to get the same amount, but it's going to be based on population. Um, from what I've read, every county is going to get at least $250,000, but I have not seen um, I have not seen what that's going to be for Edgecombe County. Of course, it wouldn't necessarily be just for something like this. It would be for any expenses related to a response uh, to this pandemic. So um, it's, it's still not clear as to what our part of that would be and how we can use it at this point. Another question. Now, I would like to just go on record saying I support it. I'm glad we got added to our file. And I agree 100% with you that only if we get funding from that 1.5 billion that we pay extra to get I don't think that's the way you said it. Is that the way you said it? Well, I, I said that my decision as to which of the three options would be based on what kind of funding. Right, right. I hear what I'm saying. What I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, I'm going to think. If you you lock them into something. You know, lock you. You lock them into something. I don't think you well, did. Okay. Well, I, I will say this: if we don't get funds from the state, in order for me to do this, I would have to come back to you oh, all right. with a budget amendment. Now we are true. Okay. <laughs> now we're I was thinking myself here. I thought we should amend the policy, but we should use comp time only and only use pay if we receive money. And and, and and I've had a conversation with the returns so of. Uh, I'm, I'm not exaggerated because I, I, I think we've got a whole lot of people on the front line. And, but I, I do think that some of these people are top time people. Okay, I do, okay, rather than what we might do as cash folks. So I think, but I would want us to basically leave some, leave some discretion for him in terms of how he do it and have that conversation with us when we get ready for it. Okay, okay. <laughs> 
I'm not trying to leave you locked in here. But he was locking you down, okay? Sure. But to highlight an important point you made, Mr. Wiggins, is that it is likely if this becomes an eligible use of these funds, without a doubt, it will probably say something to the effect if your policy says you can do it. And, and, and we, 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 and, and I, we, we get in the front of, in front of the game anyway, okay? And we, we use funds from recovery and hurricane money to pay for. Overtime, overtime. When we had, when we had to operate in person, that's right. Which that that's already clearly allowed our yeah. personal policy to do. And and the, and the and the overtime could have we could we probably could have been for something hazardous duties too. But we oh. face when we had the, right. the, the hurricane. So uh, I think this does it all. Okay. And I did make a motion that I guess I could say. Uh, any other questions? All in favor that be known by the vote sign. I remember nine. Wooten aye. Mrs. Baldwin. Ms. Harris. Paula Harris, aye. Evelyn Powell, aye. Ralph Webb, aye. Thank you so much there. Uh, consideration of approval of amendment to grant administrative position for right here. Uh, you will recall that you approved the addition of a grant administrative position in 2016 which was filled a short time follow. The position later became vacant and I have not yet uh, filled that position, though it is still budgeted. But also recall that we have, we have planned to add another position in the finance department. This position will handle a number of things, but primarily the person will track grant projects as well as assist with account reconciliation and serve as a backup to other functions. Being that the duties of the two positions would overlap in many ways, I've determined it would serve us well to combine the two positions by amending the position title and description of the grant administrator. Therefore, I recommend that you approve the amended position as the I, I apologize about this, but I didn't raise this question. We've got a, a department head. No, Gretz, Gretz, is that department? No, sir. That's not a problem. But you've got who do they report to? Now? So uh, who, what does who does that position report to? Previously, it would have reported it reported to me. As it's being um, redone, it will report to the finance director. So you you move in this position to finance Yes, sir. Okay. I'm sorry, I had to step out. Did we do we currently have a grant administrator? No, we do not. No, ma'am. We had that position still. She was with us for about eight or nine <clears throat> months, took another job opportunity, and we have not filled. Okay. Other question? Uh, motion to approve? That moves, Baldwin. Second, would Questions? All in favor, let it be known by the vote. Aye. Reverend Hines? Reverend Hines, aye. Mr. Wood? Aye. Mr. Baldwin? Baldwin, aye. Mr. Wiggins, aye. Ms. Harris? All Harris, aye. Evelyn Powell, aye. Ralph Webb, aye. Thank you so much. Moving on. Appointments. ABC. Don't pass well on March 20th. Mr. Cal Wiggins is recommended to fill the vacancy. I recommend that Mr. Wiggins. Mr. Wiggins is not a relative, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Before you ask that question, okay? And. <laughs> Kevin Wiggins. Uh, questions? Can okay. you tell me anything else about Mr. Wiggins? Yes, Mr. Wiggins is a Phillips High School graduate. I know uh, as much about him as maybe other county commissions know about who they recommend and that I don't know nothing about who they recommend. Did I say that all right? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So, yes, he's an outstanding citizen of the Clinton Rock Mountain. He's a retiree of Tormany Abbots. Okay. Okay. And uh, so I, I highly recommend it. Paul Harris, second. Thank you. And, and all in favor, uh, let it be known by both sides. High. Uh, Reverend High. Wooten, uh, not. Paul's alive. And then a weekend's eye. Ms. Harris? Paula Harris, aye. Ms. Powell? Is she with us? I'm sorry. Evelyn Powell, aye. Ralph Webb. Ralph Webb, aye. 
We also have a, report, a recommendation for our NAID board, Dr. Glenda Lawrence Knight is recommending. Um, you don't have to ask no question about her. It's yes, enough in there. <laughs> well, I recommended her. I interviewed her and talked with her. I think she's very knowledgeable about it, about the agency and how it functions. So she would be an asset to it. You make a you, you make a motion that we approve. I do. Okay. Second, Second, all Harris. Second, okay. Uh, question. All um, my only question was: I thought we were needed two. They still went open. Okay, I, I had uh, my recommendation was Gwendolyn Knight from Springfield Road and Rocky Mount. And then, and then I'm not gonna ask you nothing about her. Okay, like, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> she, she's worked with nonprofits for the last fifteen years, community enrichment organization. Okay. Okay. Good. Her name is Gwendolyn Knight. She used to live in Princeville, but she lives in Rocky Mount on Springfield Road. She moved after the flood. Position, uh, Dr. Glenda Morris Knight and Ms. Gwendolyn Knight. Uh, you reckon you nominate Ms. Gwendolyn Knight? Yes, Paula Harris. And there are no relations. Nothing. <laughs> Any other questions? All in favor, let me know my divide sign. I recognize. Wayne Harris, I. Wayne Knight. Paula Harris, I. Ms. Harris. Paula I. Paula Harris, I. Ralph Will, I. And Mr. Wiggins, if I could just point out, so your vote on those two appointees to the need board is a recommendation to the need board, and they will do the final point. And we got some problems with this, don't we? I understand oh, okay. that. We sure will. <laughs> 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 we'll pick who we want. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. So the, the planning board uh, did recently have a meeting uh, you have uh, a copy of their the minutes uh, from their meeting. Uh, there is an item to be uh, of action recommended to you tonight. You'll see that a Brandon Deal uh, submitted a request for rezoning approximately 30,000 square feet along uh, located at 4297 NC Highway, NC 122 South, currently zoned agricultural residential, 30,000 square feet or AR-30. General Industrial District M2. All the 30,000 square feet of the parcel is currently zoned M2. Mr. Deal is requesting the entire parcel be zoned M2. Uh, this does require a public hearing, so the recommended action is to call for that public hearing. Uh, your June meeting. Uh, is there a motion? Second. Second, Mr. Webb. Uh, all in favor, let it be known by the voting sign. Aye, Reverend Hines. Wiggins, aye. Wiggins, aye. Mr. Webb. Paula Harris, aye. Harris, aye. Paula, aye. We got you. Will, aye. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, Y'all hear me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. I believe this and release this for review and approval. Anything to be brought to the board's attention? No, sir. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Is there a motion? To approve. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the voting sign. Aye, Mr. Wilson. Wooten, aye. Paul's alive. Aye. Wiggins, aye. Paul Harris, aye. Captain Paul. I'm sorry. Ms. Webb. Ralph Webb. Ralph Webb, aye. Thank you. Contracts for review and approval. Anything we brought to our attention now? No, sir. You just have one. It's well under fifty thousand dollar limit for so it's for information. Okay. Is that motion to approve? Approve. Mm -hmm. seconds. Question. Second. All in favor? Let it be known by the voting sign. Aye. Okay. Wiggins aye. Paul's aye. Wiggins aye. Paul Harris aye. Paul aye. We are by. Department reports for review. I'm going to just go down. You see, financial sewer. Questions from the board in reference to any of these. I think you need to be bring, bring to our attention. I do want to point out under the water and sewer department report, you can see there's a page that uh, Mr. Matthews has shown 
Uh, as you know, starting March 31st in the governor's executive order, we can not uh, charge uh, late fee or cutoff. And so this is a report showing uh, what those fees are. So between late fees and delinquent fees, um, it's a total of a little over $29,000. Just want to be aware of it. Any questions? I have a question on that. Um, after he listed, will these folks be required to go back and pay their regular bill as well as the late fees that they did not pay before? Had any late fees already accumulated before March the 31st that's still on the bill yet? They will not have to come back and pay any late fees that otherwise would have been charged during this time period. Okay. Still there for them. They're not cutting off any services at this point. Thank you. I'll give you an update um, regarding COVID-19 pandemic, uh, if I could. Um, as you know, I've been trying to, at least on a daily basis, on the county's numbers. Um, I want to give you some, one of, uh, some additional information today or tonight. Uh, globally, um, around the world there now, it had, uh, the positive cases exceed 3.5 million positive cases. And there have been there are now over 248,000 deaths as a result of COVID-19 around the world. Uh, as of this morning's report from the state of North Carolina, 11,848 positive cases in North Carolina and 430 deaths. Uh, I want to point out, and that's something I had shared uh, with you in a, a previous report, in comparing this COVID-19 uh, virus and resulting death to the seasonal flu. Uh, at this point, the number of deaths in North Carolina has well exceeded the total number of deaths from seasonal flu as of last flu season, the last flu season being uh, from September of 2018 to May of 2019. There were 203 deaths. Um, and uh, as of the first death reported in North Carolina, which was on March the 25th, as of today, there are 430 deaths. So I think it shows um, the seriousness of what we're facing in this uh, COVID uh, coronavirus. Um, as of this morning, Edgecombe County, we have 118 positive cases. There have been, unfortunately, five deaths from Edgecombe County residents from, this, um, from COVID-19. And uh, thankfully, 61 people have now uh, recovered. Um, we have, uh, we've asked uh, Karen LaChapelle, our health director, is doing a great job. She and all of her staff who really, uh, you know, somewhat the tip of spear of what we do in all of this. You know, her staff is responsible for all communicable disease, including this. Um, they have to make some very tough decisions. They have to do some difficult work. Every positive case they have to make contact with. They have to find out who their contacts are. They have to keep contact with those folks until they get to a place where they are deemed as recovered. Uh, so it's a lot of work that they have to do, and they've been doing a great job doing it, as well as the rest of our staff have been doing a tremendous job in making the adjustments that we've had to make and trying to continue to provide our services and yet protect ourselves as best as we can. But uh, Ms. LaChapelle and her staff uh, recently reviewed some of the data um, that they maintain regarding the cases uh, that we have here in the county. Um, we have discussed those to see, uh, you know, uh, what things sort of jump out at us that grabs um, our attention. So as they reviewed the, the information on the positive cases, the following was noted. Um, as is fairly consistent with data from across the state and the nation, we see that the largest number of positive cases are with, within the 29 to 49 age range if that is the case for Edgecombe County, and that seems to be the case um, uh, as well as other places across, across the country. Uh, in Edgecombe County, there are slightly more females who have tested positive than males, but only a marginal difference. Uh, of, the, of the five deaths in Edgecombe County, um, three of those are over 65 or 65 and older, and two of, two of those are under 65. 
there are at least a dozen cases in the county where there is more than one positive case in the same home. Um, there are also, as we would probably expect, a larger number of cases inside of the towns within the county than outside of the town. Uh, as of this morning, a um, uh, little over, I think, 77 percent of the positive cases in Edgecombe, um, yes, yeah, right, 77 percent of the positive cases in Edgecombe County are African American. And now, uh, and this was just as of this morning, uh, now there seems to be an emergence of cases from the Hispanic community. Um, they're, they're doing some research to find a little bit more. The early indicator seems to be as, uh, as uh, you know, we're coming into the season and the migrant population comes, you know, moves into this area, seems to be part of the factor perhaps contributing to that, but not all of it. So uh, how does that information inform us? What does that tell us that we should be doing? So a few of the things that we should and will be doing is uh, we will continue a strong message to stay at home as much as possible, wash your hands often, clean and sanitize often, and distance oneself when around other people. And also um, we will remind those in the higher risk categories that they need to be particularly mindful to follow those measures I just mentioned. We will stress, uh, we're working on a, uh, an effort now to work with some community partners uh, to stress that people who are symptomatic or waiting for a test result or know that they are, have tested positive for the coronavirus, that they need to stay at home and they need to distance themselves from family members as much as that's easier said than done for some people, but it's certainly an important message we need to continue to get out there. And finally, uh, we need to sound the alarm regarding the apparently disproportionately higher risk to the African American community and the emergence of cases in the Hispanic community. We will work with community partners, including other health care providers, church leaders, and community based organizations to get a concerted message um, out through multiple means. So that was some information that was very important and I wanted to share. Uh, also, as you know, we're still in this modified uh, uh, status for county operations, what we refer to as level three. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, most of our buildings closed to the general public. Uh, we now have 285 staff members who their work schedules have been changed in some way because of this level of operation that we are in in an effort to try to minimize their exposure. Um, most of that 285 are working on a rotating schedule. We have a few people working from home. We have a few others that are using the emergency uh, leave or the extended family medical leave uh, to be at home to care for their children that are out of school. Uh, we will continue this level three operations through uh, this Friday, May 8th, and then we will reevaluate and determine if we need to make any changes at that time. Uh, part of that will be determined on the data that we have. It will also be determined on um, what decision the governor makes with his uh, executive order. We are already starting to think about and plan for what we're calling our transition plan for county operations. Uh, at some point, hopefully, we'll be able to get back to doing what we used to do. Nobody can really tell how long it's going to take. Um, but we do need to start thinking about how we will transition back uh, towards that. Uh, again, it will be it's uncertain how long we will be in level three operations. Um, um, we one thing the things that we we will we do expect is that it will be a phased transition. We don't expect to just everybody go back to doing exactly what they're doing, open the doors and business as usual. It'll be some type of phased transition. Uh, we will be doing social distancing in some form. Will likely become part of our new norm, to borrow a very popular phrase these days. And the data will dictate the ways and the pace in which we transition. Uh, right now, we are weighing out cost-effective modifications that we can do uh, in offices to better distance ourselves from clients and clients from each other. Uh, our goal is to implement as many of these measures uh, as we can before we reopen our building. Also, finally, the final note I'll mention is we do have a, a page on our website uh, dedicated uh, to COVID-19 and lots of information and helpful resources 
uh, for both individuals and businesses that we would encourage people uh, to make. And, uh, and that's my other thing. Any questions? A few. Go ahead. <laughs> um, not about, well, not your report that you just gave, but something that we discussed before that you may have been looking into for us. Uh, I've been getting a lot of calls to find out, have we gone any further with the company that came to talk about Internet? We had any follow-up? Oh, they um, they had, I think they wrapped up their survey, and I believe they submitted their application to the state. I have not heard um, whether they have heard anything on their application, but I certainly will follow up with them. Okay. All right. How about an update about the courthouse? On the work that's being done at the courthouse? Right. Okay. So, um, as you know, we basically had um, two different but interconnected projects going on. One project, the larger project, was um, the contract uh, to do the repair work that resulted from the mold remediation in the larger part of the, um, the basement in the courthouse. That is underway. One key milestone that we're working towards, and, and it looks like we're going to be able to meet that, is uh, we need for that contractor to be able to rewrap those pipes in the basement so that we can turn the air conditioning on in that building. Uh, he has given us a, a target date of May 11, and it looks like he's going to meet that. We've been blessed to have some relatively cool days uh, in the last few weeks, uh, but that seems to be moving along. Also, uh, you approved a contract amendment for the mold mitigation in that mechanical room. That mold mitigation has been done. I just got the clearance report back from it today. I, I did read the headline that said it did clear. I didn't get a chance yet to read through the details of it. But the mold remediation has been done in the mechanical room. So that, that work in the larger part of the basement will be ongoing for probably another month or so. My last question, can you tell me where we are with Princeville? In regards to their recovery? Right. Okay, so um, for the 53-acre project, uh, we have under contract uh, SNME engineers. They have completed their initial um, site plan for the project, which was approved by the town board. They recently completed the cost estimate for the infrastructure on the entire site as well as the um, um, as the cost benefit analysis on mitigation on the 53 acres they're about to move into the next phase of that which will be uh, to design do the architectural design for the two buildings that are to be built that we have funding for that a fire station as well as the um, the town uh, public works building uh -huh. We have a contract underway with wood engineers that's doing the elevation project, and that's elevation for both the county's 15 properties as well as the town, uh, Princeville's 15 properties. Um, they are in the process now of contacting the homeowners. They have to go to every structure and to do an engineering assessment to determine whether or not that home can be elevated at what estimated cost. If it can't, can there be repairs done so that it can? If not, the ha they will make a recommendation that the house be torn down before and rebuilt before <clears throat> it's elevated. So that's ongoing now. We have uh, completed the county's uh, buyout program and all the properties have been demolished. I think there's one last lingering buyout pro property for Princeville. That was Princeville. It was one property that... Um, uh, air property is tied up in probate, I believe. Uh, so they've been given a deadline. There's some things that they had to do, a 30-day deadline to start a project. <clears throat> so we do have one last uh, possible purchase in the town's buyout program. Other than that, all the other ones who wanted to participate have participated, and those homes have already been demolished in the last week. <clears throat> Any other questions? Any other questions? Hmm, let me think. Why are you thinking? <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, any questions from the other commissioners? Hearing none, commissioner's report. Yeah, thanks for the commission. 
Well, here's uh, just to let you know um, what I'm doing in terms of um, the meetings. Um, I rotate us in. I uh, decided that Reverend Hines and I would be at all of the good offices, and we rotate two in and out. If for some reason uh, we or uh, ill or think that we should come to con contact Mr. Evans or me, and we will ask another. Um, and I would want for our the recess meeting for our school board meeting, I would then Ms. Powell and Mr. Webb would be at that meeting and said, Yes, okay. And then meeting with Ms. Harris, whether well, the next meeting you and one of the other commissioners that are here now would be at that meeting. Now if this if if there's some differences or, or you call me or you think I need to do something otherwise, let me know. And I don't or if if for some reason you think you ought to be at that meeting and you need to talk to another commission because there's some things that are of importance to you as an individual that you need to be present to talk about. I have if you know if I need to stay for some of you or for some of you I don't mind you think you need a presence in the chambers because I think um, I've asked Mr. Uh, do we have the technology even for the school board meeting to what was that term this or to the other rooms for all of us to be closer to that meeting because I think it's important for us to try to get that to as normal as we can and still respect the media and take it all over. Evans a couple of times about this because we have requested that rescue squad change the form of board. I mean, we need to find somebody to serve on the board because we've asked for it to be able to do it. So everybody needs to be thinking about that. And along those lines, I think I brought this up before, and I don't know if we need to ask Mr. Peters. Is it proper for the county commission to set requirement for any just a Thing to the rescue squad is to take any other board we elect somebody to or or okay somebody to be on. Is it possible that we could set a member must I didn't hear part of that. Yes, sir. I didn't either. <laughs> something we can do as a board because we have so many boards that people serve on and then they don't show up and I don't believe people on the board should not show up. I, I thank you. Uh, most of us are speaking in terms of can we can we require attendance? Right. Exactly. And, and I think I think if we do the bylaws, we can put that in the bylaws. If there are our boards in there, right. if there are our right. boards, we can change that. And I think if you know if you miss three consecutive meetings, we can. Uh, uh, is there something you think we have to look at? Well, I think we should look at it, and I think we should have minimum standards, and, and but be it three or how many in a row, but I think anybody should be able to serve 50% of the people in a year. That's only six people out of a year, most of them, unless it's more. Well, and so, I agree with that. Uh, uh, and, and I think we've had a plan of what to do that, to come back to us in terms of attendance. I think that, that's actually to look at our those boards that we appoint and see if we have uh, Attendance, or uh, if we have uh, attendance of and and let's look at how uh, I don't, I wouldn't have an opposition to that right here. In opposition to that, for any of our board members. No, I think it needs to be on all our boards too. Yeah. Yeah. Now, some of these boards that you appoint appoint to, we do keep my time. Right, they they are independent boards, and it would be up to them to make changes to their own bylaws. However. Many of them probably already have some provision like that. But I think that we can still request that our appointee, that absolutely. Uh, we want them, we want resignations or something. We, we are talking about the people that we stand, That's we want them present to represent us. I think yeah. that we can deal with some language on, 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 on that appointment, okay? And we have to think about it. Some boards only need, I, I don't know, you know, there are different situations, but all of them should have 
some minimum standards before. Yeah. And, and, and what we can ask the board if our board members miss their fleet, get their tennis record. We want their tennis record of our of anybody that we have done. Attorney? Yes, Anything else to be bought before this meeting? Hearing none, is there a motion to recess this meeting until Thursday, May 7th, 2020 at 6 p.m. for a joint meeting of the Edge County County Board of Commission and the Edge County County Board of Education? Where would it be? It will be at their uh, main office, central office on North Main. Is there a motion? Move. Second. Awesome. Motion and second. All in favor, let it be no matter what time. I remember. We're not. We're not. We can die. Ms. Harris. Paul. Paul. Ms. Paul. Mr. Will. Yes, sir. Ralph Will. I. Seems like we have enough eyes. Uh, <laughs> and adjourn. <We'll> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.